Hello, I'm Mick Waters, and over the years I've visited many schools. In the course of those visits, I've been given films and videos by teachers and children, some homemade, some professional, and they've all inspired me so that I've used them in conferences to inspire other teachers. Teachers TV have asked me to share them with you to see whether you can be equally inspired. <laughs> The first clip comes from Bristol. I was at the museum when some teenagers from Cotton School had been invited by the museum to make an animated film to encourage people to enjoy the exhibits. One Year Nine Boy was particularly inspired by the pianos. My maker bought the piano shop hundreds of years ago and made me. I was amazing at that time and for many years everyone was interested in me. My maker had a great big family and lived a very long time. The other shops on the street closed down, but the piano shop never did. But then they got those new keyboard things in and I was obsolete, so they put me in the museum. I've had a long life here. Bye. Isn't that an absolutely enchanting clip? Just imagine how the youngster would feel as he, uh, as he watched his film being used in assembly for year nine to enjoy, for the whole school to enjoy. If it were used in the city museum, he's made a contribution to the community in which he lives. And the feeling of contribution is a massive impact on children. How do we all make them feel they've got something to offer, something to give? This notion of audience and purpose is so important. If the youngster knows that there's an audience, somebody who's going to watch it for a reason, the effort they put into their work is so much greater. That's different from giving it a grade or giving it a mark. It's different from saying, well done. He'll get the feedback when it's shown to an audience. He'll know whether it made the impact it needed to make. Bye. It's really good to make the curriculum as dramatic as possible. This next clip comes from a 10-minute film made by pupils at the George Slater School in the West Midlands. Maths, not usually seen as a dramatic subject, is right at the heart of this adventure. Clearly they want to make the ultimate species. If they created a new species of animal, they would be able to control the world. Anyone would either fear or respect them. They could do what they want. And make a lot of money. We need to solve these formulas. Look, the door code is math and the letters are here in the formulas. So the numbers that the letters represent make up the door code. The maths comes into the story, the science fiction that story. Could be the door code to and this excerpt is, is uh, giving us a flavour. It's the trailer that we've used so with youngsters to try and get them to watch the whole thing. Now, of course, we can't all have a professional film crew spending time showing youngsters how films are made and how they can build a dramatic plot. And that's it. They can make up little plays. They can have time to see their maths in the real world coming alive. And if I were a teacher in a school, I'd want to get this film and I'd want to say, let's have a look at it. Where was the maths in that? Now, what other maths could we use? And could we make up plays or homemade films that we could show to other people in our school? We might have a small problem. Yes, so do we. Look, you better get into that saying. And there are brilliant teachers of mathematics all over the country, but uh, the message still is that a lot of people still see it as tedious exercise but work. Well, here it's different. The children have put in a drama around their mathematics, dramatic mathematics. M A T H. You must work faster. And S. Nine. The children were able to apply their mathematics in, in their real pretend contexts. And uh, the technique of stopping on the mathematics for a minute is one that came across in the film, but could equally be employed in the classroom. Saying, hold it there, let's look at the maths while we just pause and carry on. Let's see why the maths is making sense and why the maths is so important at this point. The ending's absolutely delightful. 
I think many a teacher will laugh at the way this finishes. That's it. Nine, six, eleven, four and seven. Oh, press it! I'm going to get the teachers. This is one mess I'm not going to get the blame for. It's lovely, isn't it? They always want a teacher when there's a problem. And it's one mess I'm not going to get the blame for. Oh, man, I made a mistake. Better throw it in the bin. Better throw this in the bin, I made a mistake. <coughs> Asking children to make their own video is a terrific way of bringing learning alive. This is a public information film. It was made by children at uh, Crossing Hand School in East Sussex. They thought it would be a good idea to try and get the community interested in uh, sustainability and looking after the world's resources. So the, the children made a series of films which played in the, uh, in the school hallway, in the, in the entrance, in the foyer. And uh, later the film was played in the local community as well. These are just uh, snippets from uh, one of the films I think is absolutely delightful. It's about the paper man. Ah, what are you? Ah, it's the paper man! I have a piece of paper now, put me in the right bin! What I did? They didn't, you didn't put me in the recycling bin! I'm oh, sorry! To make up to me, could you please put me in the recycling bin? OK, if you wish. What a terrific film. One of the things we know from research is that uh, many youngsters are concerned about the future of the planet. I know it seems odd, these very young children are concerned in that way, but the research also shows that where they think they're doing something about it, they're more likely to be happy, contented, purposeful young people. They do better at school, they do better in their lives, they, they enjoy themselves more and they achieve more. And of course, uh, if youngsters can make films like this, how else could we take it forward in school? What could you do in your school to give children the same sorts of opportunity? Maybe they could make films about being safe or looking after their own health. Perhaps they could do films about careers and jobs and people at work. Bye-bye, everybody! Delightful. It's not rubbish, is it? <laughs> Most teachers know the value of an educational visit. In this next clip, we see children from Jordanstown School in Northern Ireland on a visit to a local bird sanctuary. An inspired teacher gave each of the children one of these simple cameras so that they might record the experience for later use. Typical children, they recorded each other, and the result is an enchanting clip. By the way, all of these children are hearing or speech impaired. <coughs> This is a super clip, real improvised filmmaking. So here we've got the introduction to the Wildlife Trust Centre and then the uh, commentator turns us towards our expert on bird beaks. Of course it's difficult to do a commentary, uh, a voiceover, when you're having to do signs as well, and these children cope with that challenge so, so very effectively. Of course, they didn't go to the bird sanctuary to just learn about filming, they went to learn about birds. And so the girl, our beak expert, is able to show us the different sorts of beaks that each bird has, from the, the pliers through to the pinchers and down to the corkscrew birds. And here we have the introduction to the centre and uh, the welcome from our tour guide. Thank you for telling me about you. Those youngsters really come alive on the screen. I think it's like uh, the rough jottings we take when we're out on a visit. It's teaching children to collect thoughts and images so that when we get them back to base, whether it's the laboratory, the classroom, the art room, wherever we work in, we, we set about making sense of it all in context. And of course, through it, we see the youngsters bringing their learning alive. They're desperate to tell each other what they're seeing and what they're knowing, but they're also playing at being grown-ups who are producing a television programme, looking out at the view, seeing the scenery, being welcomed and guided around, having the short informal talk, like they see on documentaries. 
there's some budding David Attenboroughs in this program and uh, they're there in our schools all over the place. <laughs> and wasn't it an energetic clip? Didn't those children bring it alive? And you've got to say there's something in that about the teacher. A teacher who's got the, ch the nerve to give the children the cameras and say, well, you film what you need to film. Think about the other extreme, the printed sheet, tick and cross, have you seen, did you notice? And they just simply fill it in. Who's getting the most out of the learning? The children with the printed sheet or the children with the camera? The children keeping the record that they want to keep or keeping the record that the teacher decided they needed? Hello and welcome to our school. It is called Gravesley Primary School and it is in Wolverhampton. Of course, one reason for making a film is just to keep a record of what we've been doing at Gravesley Primary School, where this clip comes from. Uh, that's exactly what we've got. This is a longer film, it's uh, about four minutes, and uh, it was made to record the work of a whole term, half a day a week a whole term, on the project which was igniting learning. We made lanterns and covered them in bright coloured paper. We put candles inside so they would shine brightly in the dark. We worked with an artist and a graphic designer. They asked us to think about symbols and helped us design pictures that could become fire drawings. We it's obviously a professional film. It's uh, very fast actually at the beginning. It's made of still photos and bits of video. But I think it's very effective in showing the way in which children's work can evolve and unfold over time. Of course, the closer they got to the event and uh, doing the practical work, the need to put on the safety kit and the goggles and all the baby grows, they suddenly realised we were actually going to do this. Until then, they've been practising and pretending. Now it's for real. Listen to this lad as he, uh, he talks about what's going to happen. He's excited, he's stumbling over himself, trying to get us to understand that this, this is a big event and we're actually going to do it, we're going to burn them. Well, we're going to pull it up and we're going to get like these little long sticks what we've seen in the, um, in the video and, we're gonna, and they're going to have fire on because power pins on and we're going to like put them on the, on the picture and burn them. So what we see is lots and lots of learning coming together. Careers, health, safety, participating in the local community, children realising that we can set this up and we can invite our family and our friends along and we can have a lovely event. And we've done it, and we've made it happen. And all through that, the children felt part of something bigger, something real, something that mattered. And if you go to the school, each term they take on a different project. Freedom, migration, and this time, igniting learning. And I think in that, we did see learning absolutely ignited, coming together in a way that makes children remember it forever. <laughs> The best day of my life. But it would be nice, wouldn't it, if youngsters could come out of school relatively often saying, that's been the bestest day. How many things do we do that really matter, make a difference, give them a memory, something they'll never forget? The bestest day. I wonder if you've captured a really inspiring piece of learning on video. I'm looking for short video clips to use in this series. So visit the Teachers TV website to find out how you can send your videos to me.